<clears throat> I don't think the Red Sox are a playoff team this year. I need to preface this by saying that I am a huge Yankees fan. Oh, brother, this but, whoa, 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 hang stinks. on, hear me out. I think I have a compelling argument to make, and I'll get into my main point right away. Health. Last year, the Red Sox were one of the healthiest teams in baseball, with their players spending the second fewest number of days on the injured list, only behind the Guardians. They were nearly 50% below the average number of days missed per team, but it gets even crazier when you take out the COVID days. The Red Sox had the second most number of days missed because of COVID. When you remove the COVID days and look only at actual injuries, the Sox lack of injuries becomes even more apparent, and I don't think it's sustainable. Maybe they have the best training staff in all of baseball. Maybe their players are more durable than average. Even if I give them the benefit of the doubt and they're a team that's good at staying healthy, the one thing I genuinely don't think is possible for them to replicate is their starting pitching health. Pitchers with great mechanics still fall victim to injuries more frequently than position players, but Red Sox starting pitchers only spent 177 days on the injured list all of last season. Entering the season, Chris Sale was set to come back from Tommy John surgery in August, and Eduardo Rodriguez missed the first week of the season with a sore arm. Other than those two injuries entering the year, they had no other injuries to their starters. None. Zero. Sale, Nick Pavetta, and Martin Perez missed a combined 33 days because of COVID, two total IL stints outside of COVID for their starters, and neither happened during the season. That just doesn't happen. Three Red Sox pitchers started at least 30 games, and five pitchers started at least 22. The White Sox are the only other team to accomplish this feat, and they had the least amount of starter IL days. The point of all this is to say that I don't think this will happen again. Even if they remain within the upper third of the league in terms of staying healthy, odds are that they'll at least have a few more injuries than last year. They lost three of their top five starters to free agency, and they're relying on some not so dependable replacements for those innings. Their biggest ad is James Paxton, who's currently recovering from Tommy John and not expected back until the second half of the season. They also brought in Rich Hill, who turns 42 and has an extensive injury history, and Michael Waka, who also has an injury history and just is isn't very good anymore. They're also relying on Sale and Tanner Houck to throw more innings this year, and Sale's already broken his ribs and isn't currently throwing. If everyone else somehow stays healthy, they may have a marginally stronger rotation this year, but I don't think they have the starting pitching depth to make the playoffs even if their rotation weathers just an average amount of injuries. This is all compounded by the fact that the Rays, Yankees, and Blue Jays all had more injuries than average last year, with the Rays being the second most injured team. I can't see Boston finishing ahead of any of these ball clubs unless their incredible injury luck persists for another year. And beyond this point, the Red Sox lost Hunter Renfro and Kyle Schwarber's bats, and I don't think Trevor Story and JBJ's production is enough to make that up. Their defense got a little better, but their hitting got worse and their bullpen stayed mediocre. Injuries are bound to catch up with them at some point, so I don't see them finishing above fourth place unless one of the teams ahead of them has everything go wrong and they have everything go wrong. Okay, okay. Let me cut you off right there. I'm Aiden, host of Speaking Socks by the Tipsy Tailgate, and I have to interject real quick. Health is tricky, I give you that, but the fact of the matter is that health is a complete unknown, and as there is no explanation for why the 2021 Red Sox stayed incredibly healthy, there is also no explanation for why the 2022 Red Sox can't do the same. Taking a look at the Red Sox on paper, it doesn't take much to notice the holes in their starting rotation. With Sale recovering from injury, the Sox are ready to roll out Nathan Avaldi as their current ace, followed by Nick Pavetta, Tanner Houck, Michael Waka, and likely Rich Hill. While I will not stand for Avaldi slander, I'll hear you out on the uncertainty of the others. Nick Pavetta is a mystery box. You never know what you're going to get, but let's not discount multiple performances where Pavetta displayed grit on the mound and a higher ceiling than most credit him for, even going 6-0 with a 3.86 ERA in his opening 10 starts of last season. Say what you want about Tanner Houck, but if he didn't impress you in his relief appearances last postseason as a rookie, then we must not have been watching the same games. Well, I'll give you a stinker against the Astros in Game 6 of the ALCS, but that was an overall bad showing for the Red Sox. As for Waka and Hill, their job will be to eat innings and stay around a 4-3 to a 4-5 ERA. If they can do that, the addition of Chris Sale, and potentially a deadline deal for another starter, this rotation isn't one to sleep on. As for the Red Sox lineup, the easy way to put it is, it should be feared. The loss of Kyle Schwarber hurts, and so does Renfro, but Trevor Story has the potential to punish Fenway Park's green monster. Last year, he was spraying balls to all fields and hitting more ground balls than ever. If he he focuses on pulling the ball in the air, as he's done in the past, I could see him topping 35 homers. He's done this before in previous seasons, and there's an incentive for him to attack the monster. Even with a down year last season, he was worth over 4 war. The last thing I'll leave you with is a factor that not many people outside of Boston are accounting for, the savior, Bobby Dalback. 
He had huge expectations coming into last season, as one of the better hitting prospects in the entire organization. Though he did show flashes, a measly 240 batting average trumped all positive reactions. But when you take another look at his stats, 25 home runs and his ridiculous barrel rate and exit velocity foreshadow a possible breakout. Now with another star in the lineup in Trevor Story, the pressure is off Dalback this season. Less pressure and lower in the lineup could be exactly what the young power hitter needs to thrive on this team. Finally, if all else fails, the Red Sox top prospect, or second to Marcelo Meyer, depending on where you look, could play a huge role in this year's squad. First baseman Tristan Casas is highly touted in the Red Sox organization and earns himself a 65 power rating on MLB.com scouting grades. Whether it's Dahlbeck or Casas doing the power hitting for the Sox in 2022, it's almost guaranteed the position will give them a ton of home runs and RBI opportunities. Thanks for having me and that's baseball. You bring up some good points, but I'm not quite convinced. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of the Red Sox and the AL East in this upcoming season. Part 2 of my Kevin Mitchell series will be out in a couple of weeks, so check out part 1 if you haven't already, and subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss part 2. And make sure to check out Ains links in the description. Thanks for watching.